All right, so got a core exercise for you. I'm going to do a series of uh, videos kind of dedicated to the core. Actually, one of my clients asked me about it. I have a few I've done in the past, but um, this would be good just so <clears throat> that my clients have and of course, anybody else out there. So I know that most people when they're watching this video, they can give a shit about the why behind it. But I want to explain it as well too, because sometimes with some of the stuff that I'm doing, somebody might question it. So we want to work our core like an endurance muscle, which means that we should hold it. Because it is an endurance muscle, meaning that it kind of holds us through the day, we want to train it that way. In fact, one thing that we could do go wrong, which most people do, is that they'll actually train it like a like an like a leg muscle which is powerful meaning like holding a plate and only doing 10 reps well if you do that long enough you now take that change that muscle from being an endurance to being a muscle that's just strong and tires out quickly so we want to train it in, in its function that it that it works for us and so holds are extremely important and that's why you can see that most people and most coaches now have included planks in their uh, programming with their athletes, of course. And so when we were holding a plank, we know if just a straight front front plank is more of the abs, reverse plank is the lower back. We wanna, so reverse plank, and I'll, I'll run you through different videos with this, but today I wanna focus more on the front part, which is gonna be like everybody's bread and butter, the sit up aspect of it. So we wanna hold this. So the Biggest thing out of this is your posture. So when you're holding a sit up, most people they're like this and they wonder why they're getting hernia because their stomach is pushing out. When I get tall and, my, and long, so when I have good posture, my stomach goes in and my chin kind of tucks. When I have bad posture, my stomach pushes out and my chin juts out. It's just hard to get that feeling when we're in a sit up type position. But that's the feeling that you wanna go for. And in fact, a lot of the studies have show that that's when you're in that position, you're more stable. That transversus abdominis muscle, which is that deep muscle. Usually if you cough, <coughs> that's that muscle right there that actually goes in, all right? And we wanna target that. And the best way to target that is by getting our, is to activate it by getting ourselves tall and in good posture. So uh, what I always say to my clients when we're holding this sit up, butt out, chest out, and don't lose that. So you wanna have that natural curve in your low back instead of being like that and just blowing everything out the backside, begging for a hernia. The second aspect of a sit up is that you want, your core is so cued up by with your feet. The kinetic chain that we have, right? Everything influences the other. Most people do sit-ups and they hook their feet into something and it's just, think about it, it's completely unnatural. So we wanna push our feet. So this is my feet, I wanna push it into something. In fact, a lot of times if my clients have low back problems or their core, I'll actually have them push their feet on me when they're doing a sit-up. And at any point in the sit-up, if they lose their, their feet contact with my hands, I know we need some work. So I have this lovely machine right here that I'm gonna push my feet in there, especially the base of my big toe. I wanna to dig that in there and go back. So I'm pressing as hard as I can, chest out, butt out, so you can see me, and then I'm gonna go down, right? Eventually, what I wanna do is get all the way down so you guys can see me here. Push on this here. So I'm right off the ground, right? And then we time that. So just like you're holding a plank, 30 seconds would be a good place to start and then build towards a minute. After a minute, instead of sitting there for two, excuse me, I don't say two would be kind of pushing it. I'd go two sometimes on my clients, especially if they're um, got back issues. But you can see just by holding it, it's like an isometric exercise. If I have somebody that has spinal issues, it's a great way to strengthen that with that isometric movement because they're not moving in and out of that. That joint's not, it's still getting strong with, without movement. So an isometric is a great way that we have stuff. So if I want to progress this now, I can easily hold weight. And what we want to do 
to really get the core fired is to hold it in one hand. Why one hand? Because if I got a weight in one hand right here and I go back, it wants to pull me towards that side, right? So if I have it here, yeah, and that's what we call torque. And we want to strengthen those muscles to avoid torque. Torque is rotational strength. So as a trainer in a hospital, my, the nurses there were always had terrible backs from bending over a patient's bed and then grabbing them and they always say the same thing. You know, I was bent with that bad rounded back and I'm grabbing them. So this is a great way to strengthen that muscle. Now, I wouldn't say start off with a 20, but start with a five and a 10 and then switch it, right? So I might hold it, you know, while I'm here for 15 seconds, flip it here, or maybe do my first set on my right, second set on my left. And of course, we wanna find out if there's a weakness. So when I hold it to my left, yeah, I'm having a harder time. Ding, 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 red flag. You need to focus on that, or it's gonna bite you in the ass later on, all right? So with the dumbbell now, Got my feet put, pushing, I'm holding, right? Chest out, butt out, here. So as I go back then too, what I can do with that dumbbell to really, to get the, the abs are really fired by when I reach back, they're stretching, and when I pull back, that's how they work. Most, not from laying down and being on the ground and, that, and doing that, it's completely, non-functional abs are cued from reaching back, coming in, anything behind me, see how when I come back, there's the abs. And most of the time, we're taking it way past that. And again, looking for hernia, looking for back problems. So the way I can tie this in with this exercise is by doing a press, all right? Now, if you have back problems, you should not be weighting this at all with dumbbells. You should just start off square one, right? Or you might be going back that far and that's it. And then a little bit farther and then that's it. And then we never want to tire these muscles out and then start squatting, right? So this would be something you'd want to do usually at the end of your workout. Or if you're smart like, and you want to do it in between sets, like I do so I'm just not sitting on my ass the whole time, I'll do like uh, push-ups, core, push-ups, core. But I'm never taking it to failure. So I'm always leaving gas in the tank with my core. I don't want to train it, like I said, to where it's going to exhaust out. So I always want to keep, you know, five, at least five reps or so in the tank. So let's progress this. So I'm here, and then what I can do is press behind me, right? And then boom, now, now I got that reach behind me. Now I'm really firing the abs up. And then I can rep that up. Or I can just hang in it and press. Okay? So, don't go to 20s. Progress yourself. I had started with fives and then have moved on from there. So, that is all that front part, the sit-up stuff. So, the next videos, what I'll do is let's focus on the back. And I'll show you some back exercises. And then, of course, then we want our right side and our left side. And we can do that with adding planks in it. So here's we're here again. We're doing static holds to kind of focus on that. And I'll do another series where we're kind of really bringing movement in here. So this is a great foundational core exercises to build that core up for some of the exercises and the advanced exercises that I'm going to show you. To talk about an advanced exercise, if you've got 20 pounds and you're pressing over your head and holding that, you're going to have you got some strong ass abs.